Welcome back to Alden Vaults and this is the history of the Webb Barn on Broadway. We'll look at its history and its connections to a murder, a move and its colour changes. So if you have had, ever had a pint or a meal in the Webb Barn, now known as San Waco, then this video might be of interest to you. So, the Red Barn is located at 195 Broadway. And the history that dates back of this pub to 1974. When, at a meeting, the Chatterton Highways and Building Committee approved a somewhat unusual application by the Lancash Lancaster Taverns, part of the Watney Man who wanted to use the framework of an old barn to make the interior of a new public house on the corner of Field Green and Broadway. The committee was told that it would be a quietly an effect, effect, efficiently one pub with a lounge bar and another room at the lower level, possibly a dining area upstairs. This would be a series of gables. There would have been a series of gables on the full green side from, and from the front it would look like a single-storey building with a high-pitched roof. A good, a good quality red brick and blue slate exterior would blend in with houses of the area. It would be unusual design for the northern, for North Manchester, but in good taste, the barn timbers would be cleaned and treated to create a medieval Baronal Hall atmosphere, atmosphere. So, let's just go and have a quick gander. At, let's have a look at these gables, shall we? Let's see if I'm still in there. Yeah, you can just see here. So you can see here, and there's three gate, about three or four gables on this pub. One that were the main entrances couple still standing in, one right in the centre and one at the rear of the property. So, while we're looking at this side of the view, um, the licence for the new pub to be called the Web Barn um, was granted at, a session, at the sessions in May 1974. The architect, Mr Gordon Moss, said the old barn timbers had come from Suffolk, not far from the location of the Red Barn murder, and were being slotted together like a giant jigsaw puzzle. The enthusiastic Mr. Moss even suggested that the replicas of the murder weapons, pistols, and butcher knives could be displayed on the walls, and there could be a Maria Martin's bar, the victim, and William Calder's bar, the murderer, without being in any way depressing. So that's quite interesting that the original plans were to reflect this history of this pub in from its murder days inside the calling the bars, William Calder and Ma Ma Maria Martin's. Um, and also displaying the murder to murder weapons. So, without further ado, well, the murderer, the murder in question took place in the village of Pulstead on 18th of May, 1827. And Calder had a promised to and take Maria Martin to Ips Ipswich and marry her 
but instead murdered her and buried her body in the East Red Barn. Later, he wrote to her parents. To her parents to say that they together to say that they were married and living happily together but Mrs Martin was suspicious and dreamed that her daughter had been murdered and buried in the barn. The floor was dug up, Maria's remains were found in the sack and Corda was arrested at Ealing. I'm just going to move you along in a second. Weave his ash in wheel, let's have a look, there we go. Ealing, where he was found with a brace of pistols and a passport for France. He tried and he was, he was tried and executed at Bury St Edmund's Ghoul in 1828. The gruesome tale of the Red Barn murder caught the public's imagination and soon become the subject of books and plays. There have also been radio and television and film productions, notably with Ted Slaughter in 1920s, based on the story. Chatterton's Red Barn had a positional license transferred from Richard Butworth of Whitney Man to John Newport on 15th of July 1975, and John opened the pub on 29th of July and he left in 1977 and soon after there were some alterations to the building. So let's go back to the entrance at the front of the building. The entrance facing Broadway was bricked up and an extra entrance was made on the north side which was a approached from the car park. Red Barn had a new license every year or two and then about 1985, Whitney Mann decided to spruce up the place and weed paint the outside. This caused quite a fury. And they were painting the red barn blue. So, it was technically nicknamed Blue Barn, I would imagine. Then, Colin and Silver, Silver Farrell took over in July 1985 with Sylvia as the license. See, at the time, Colin had the license of a plough in on Alden Road, Roxdale, which he had kept since 1974, and this was transferred to another tenant late in that year. In, se in September, Sylvia applied to reopen the Broadway entrance and brick up the side entrance. When they were stored, the painters returned and quickly repainted the red barn red and controversy subsided. Following May, there were more. Following May, there were more improvements when they split the levels of interior. When the split levels of the interior were connected for convenience for the clientele. Colin and Sylvia continued to run the pub restaurant until 1994 when, when your truly was born. Today, either, uh, when this public book was published in 1999, I reckon, it was either Hiver Hargreaves who was ably runs the red barn, which was then painted red. And I don't, I can't recall, but I don't know if after now, after, after 1990s, um, if the red barn was painted red again. Um, and then it became Ancora. Um, and then it became San Rocco recently.
in the last few years. So before we wrap up this video, stay tuned because there's an exciting little feature what I noticed at the back of this pub, which gives a little bit of a nod to the past owners. Are we ready to find out? Join us around the back. Ladies and gentlemen, well, well, this is at the back of the pub. It was a Wilson's house at some point, because you got the Wilson's lantern there. And then this could have been uh, the old north entrance from the car park, which has probably been boarded up, or could be in another entrance at some point just now. And you can also still see there's some like repair work just done there. So, this, it, this is what I wanted to show you, that Wilson lantern. Means it's been owned by Wilsons at some point in its life. So, I would like to take this time to thank you for watching this video on this new series where we're going around all the pubs and have a look at their stories they have to tell because it's like the wall, if the walls could speak they'll have some to, oh, 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 just before we go, just have something for you. It's at the back of a pub. Just bear with us, bear with us gentlemen and ladies. Can you just see that, ladies and gents? That's the original red barn bricks at the bottom, at the back of the pub. So that's the lantern. And so this would have been the footpath, which would have taught you there. So yeah, so I can now say Thank you for watching this video. We'll see you on another video. Joining you from the Red Barn in Chatterton and Broadway. If you like this video, give it a like so YouTube knows it's a good video and it tells me that you're enjoying these types of videos. Um, and just comment down below, share, do you need new stuff. And thank you for watching. This has been Eldon Vaults. See you.